Welcome to Base Space. A crypto podcast. Base Space. What's up, Parker? How you doing? Hey, man. How are you? I'm doing great. You got myself, the crypto of you two. You got Super High and, and Chase here from Base Space, man. We're, we're excited to have you on. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I know we have like 30-ish minutes, but I'm sure we can get through a lot of it. Um, happy to start wherever you think is fit. Yeah, I think uh, I think for like the listeners that are also tuning in, maybe on YouTube or the podcast, a lot of them are uh, much newer and might not be f- as familiar with Terra. So maybe if you could just give us like a brief overview of like what Terra is and what it means for the crypto ecosystem, that'd be extremely helpful. Yeah, so I would say Terra is a lot of things, but at its core, it's a layer one blockchain. Um, and Terra is a suite of decentralized algorithmic stable coins. So really our mission is to create a new and better improved form of money. And that drives everything that we do. So everything that you see built on Terra or like the you know crazy lunatic community, everybody has the singular goal of getting UST, which is our... U.S. dollar pegged algo stablecoin to essentially um, become the de facto currency for DeFi and for Web3. And we've been off to a great start. I, I think we're just at the beginning. So happy to talk t- to any of those points or anything specific that the listeners or you guys have in mind. Yeah, I would love to uh, touch on the UST and um, the stablecoin and and how how that's set up with like within within Terra because it's very different right from other other stable coins that users might be familiar with familiar with. Sure. So by design, um, UST being an algorithmic stable coin is a bit different than let's say how Tether and Circle operate. So if you look at Tether and USDT or USDC, there is essentially a dollar's worth of bank deposits or um, money market securities backing a dollar's worth of those stable coins. Whereas for UST, it's really governed by a set of um, game theoretic incentives and an on-chain swap mechanism whereby a dollar's worth of UST is always um, able to be swapped into a dollar's worth of Luna and vice versa. So to the extent, you know, UST moves away from its pegged to the dollar and trades at a dollar and 10 cents or vice versa trades at a discount at 90 cents users are able to either um, capture that market arbitrage by performing the market swap mechanism and that's helpful in the sense that it sets economic incentives for any actor to participate in this um, in this balancing act for UST stability and we feel like we've kind of been battle tested you know, UST has been in the market since late 2020 and with the launch of Mirror and Anchor, as well as some market volatility that we saw last May, as well as um, parts of late last year, as well as early this year, um, we've definitely seen our fair share of outflows as well as just um, stress on on the swap mechanisms and UST is held pretty well. And I feel like um, the market trust in algorithmic stablecoin has definitely increased whereby USD's market cap is, um, I think we're around like 11.6 billion right now. We definitely want to grow that market share. And that's, again, um, really the crux of what we're here to do. Could you, uh, you, you had kind of touched on that about how you guys have been really kind of battle tested. But I, I, I think from what I do know about Terra and the, the uniqueness of the minting function could you kind of expand on how you guys can maintain the peg because i know that was kind of a narrative for a little bit before we're kind of worried about um the deep peg occurring um i just think for people who may not have like a really good understanding it'd be really helpful to kind of understand the mechanics behind that yeah so to go a little back a little bit more in depth to um the swap mechanism so luna is our um staking asset but also essentially by design, where there's some of the short-term volatility in UST's peg. So you can imagine if the swap mechanism on chain allows users to, to exchange a dollar's worth of Luna for a dollar's worth of UST and, and vice versa, what can happen is if for whatever reason there is a market event 
and UST is trading above a dollar. A person can exchange um, a dollar's worth of Luna into what the market is determining as UST's price at a dollar and 10 cents and sell it in that on-chain swap mechanism and capture that 10 cent arbitrage. And essentially you are burning Luna as a result. Whereas if UST is trading at a discount, as you can imagine, um, Luna would be minted to capture that arbitrage whereby um, UST is trading at 90 cents and you would essentially be buying the discounted UST on market and swapping it into a dollar's worth of um, Luna essentially. So this this sets um, pretty interesting like economic incentives for people to participate in this pegging mechanism. Um, I would say that some of the other algorithmic stable coins out there are designed in a similar way whereby there's a secondary asset and almost like a derivative of the stable coin um, to perform and act in this way. I think what separates us from other decentralized algorithmic stable coins is the utility for, for UST. So to give you a little bit more context into Terra, when Terra started back in 2018, um, we were focused on this concept of cryptocurrencies essentially performing the function of a currency and having a stable value. And in order to have some utility behind the stable coin, we created something called Chai, which is um, an e-payment gateway in Korea that has right now um, maybe a couple billion dollars worth of um, annual revenue um, usage by more than a couple million users. There's actually like a Chai debit card and it actually powers real world purchases. And on the back end, it's really hooked up to the vendors and merchants. And the, the blockchain is essentially obfuscated from, from the users. But with that, it essentially created a stable coin that is facilitating real world use cases. Um, and then we saw like an interesting opportunity as the GameStop slash Wall Street Bets fiasco was happening for there to be uh, a problem in one, the lack of access for other parts of the world to invest and trade in um, U.S. assets, as well as there to be a more decentralized solution to, to equity markets, um, as well as other markets. And we created Mirror, which is our um, decentralized investing protocol. And then we shortly launched Anchor, which is our high um, stable fixed savings rate protocol. And from these use cases, not only had we increased the utility and kind of the attractiveness of UST, but we also spurred a movement of sorts of people being inspired and building on top of these protocols and um, essentially creating more use cases for UST. So there's more than 100 protocols building on Terra right now. I would say that in addition to the layer one story, we are also very excited about just the growth of Web3 in general. I hate the term Web3, but um, you know, to the extent there's going to be stable coins um, denominating some of these activities. We believe that UST is is the best stable coin to do so. And at the core of the issue is if you are using USDT or USDC, as I alluded to earlier, you're using a quote unquote centralized stable coin whereby your assets are not necessarily censorship resistant because a dollar's worth of these stable coins are held in, let's say, financial in intermediaries like banks or other market participants, which are um, easily, uh, it's easy for, for those to have attack vectors by, by governments and by other agents. Whereas for UST, there's really no way to stop this um, mechanism. And we think decentralized finance should run on decentralized monies. And so far, UST is the best um, proven case of that. Yeah, that's um, that's extremely interesting, and I, you had kind of touched on Anchor, and I want to ask a question about that. And it, and it might be a little bit too specific of a question, um, and might be better oriented towards the team. But could you kind of touch on Anchor Protocol a little bit and give like a high level uh, view of how Anchor can pay that twenty percent APR on USC? Because, like, from my understanding, that's been a pretty um, long standing APR, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just curious, like. What are the mechanics at play to ensure such a high return for people on their stables? Yeah, so Anchor is like super interesting um, and super compelling because of, I feel like the elegance in its simplicity. So essentially what Anchor does, it, it acts as an intermediary between borrowers and lenders of, of liquidity. 
And essentially to borrow liquidity on Anchor, um, you have to post up collateral, but the only types of collateral that are accepted are yield bearing assets. So essentially you have collateral that's um, producing yield. And what we are doing is passing forward that yield um, onto the providers of liquidity. And as, as we, for in the current stance right now, we have um, bonded Luna and bonded ETH. Um, the staking yield of, of these assets are, let's say, in the high single digits. If you can imagine a borrower um, taking like a 50% LTV or putting up, you know, $100 worth of collateral and borrowing $50 worth of, of, of liquidity, you can imagine where um, if you can double the staking yield that is passed through the liquidity provider, you actually achieve double digit returns on, on savings. Um, we currently support those two collateral types, but we're very close to launching bonded um, soul and other assets. So as you can imagine, if we expand the universe of assets that are, that are taken into Anchor, and some of these assets are also higher yielding than um, let's say Luna or ETH staking yield, it's totally feasible for Anchor to be you know, self-sufficient for a long time, but also to continue to um, generate this high fixed yield. It's just uh, compelling, as I said earlier, because if you look at the savings yield of traditional finance products as you know, rates are brought down to near zero or even negative territory by central banks across the world after COVID and after really like the financial crisis in 08, um, there's nothing that competes with this. Uh, maybe you can get like high yields like this if you invest in, you know, very emerging market um, government debt, but it's really unheard of. And I think once people realize the mechanism and the elegance behind it, uh, it's it's approaching a scale where it is Lindy. And I think there's like 10 billion of TDL right now in Anchor. Um, you know, we're very excited for the protocol. And as we have additional initiatives that we are building on right now, we think that it can scale further. Hey, uh, SJ, I'm, I'm also curious around like Terra's governance system. Uh, could you talk to us about that? And I'm curious if like the everyday user um, can put through a proposal or is it kind of limited to like the larger players within, within the Terra ecosystem? Yeah, anybody can put up a proposal um, and we have more than 130 validators um, who are essentially governing, governing the DAO, if you will. Um, one of the interesting proposals that passed recently was a partnership with, with Was the Washington Nationals. So I think that was the first DAO partnership whereby um, a governance proposal passed for us to lock into a multi-year agreement with the Nationals for uh, marketing and exclusive access to their clubs, et cetera. But I would say that um, anything is fair game as long as, as as long as there's support for it within the community. Yeah, and I, I might be a, like a little naive here, but is there is there like a community pool that that you guys that the the DAO can tap into and say, hey, we want to execute on X, or how how are they actually like getting the funds to go out and do these things? Yeah, there's def there's a community pool. Um, some of that was depleted as we bootstrapped the growth of Ozone, um, which is now a part of Risk Harbor for providing insurance on some of the protocols that are built on Terra and expanding and kind of safe locking the Terra economy. But we have a community pool that is used for a lot of these proposals. And I, I think it's underappreciated um, how powerful our community pool is. So um, I believe we have like $2.2 billion of UST in our community pool and maybe like half a billion dollars worth of Luna in the community pool right now. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I did, I did see the Washington National, Nationals news. I didn't realize that that was a Dow vote. That, that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and um, some of the um, other kind of recent proposals and as, you know, UST is really at the core of what we do. And we've had this vision for a long time for UST to not only be the, you know, quote, currency for the Terran economy, but also just all of, all of DeFi. We've passed a lot of proposals recently with... Um, majority support to get UST incentives on other chains. 
um, whether it be Solana or Avalanche, um, uh, Phantom, you name it. So I think that's also like a very effective use case for our community pool as well and, and the DAO participating in it. That's super cool. Yeah, um, I'm a huge fan of DAOs. I, I love everything um, that other projects are activating with DAOs. And it's really cool to see how you guys are applying it to Terra. Um, I'm also like super curious, like your title is Special Projects. Like what, is, what, is, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, yeah. So I, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, my story, and I think some people may have heard this, is maybe early last year, I reached out to, to Doe because I was super, you know, Enamored, enamored by what Do and the team were building. And I believed in the vision of having a decentralized money and a decentralized economy. Um, I spent a decade at Goldman before this. So I, I was like a trad by suit and um, it was just, you know, super compelling what they were trying to do. So I hit him up on Twitter DM and um, every time I did, I sent him like a new idea of what we can build on Terra. And I think at the time he needed somebody to come in and, you know, help um, as as the community and the ecosystem was growing to help field a lot of the inbound that we were getting of builders who are trying to build on Terra, but also, you know, try to incubate and start projects on our own that seemed compelling enough. So I came on um, to help do that. And I think what is interesting about Terra is if you look at other, you know, major players in this space right now, I, I think our moat, like the Terra... Terra's mode is really innovation or us having been, you know, ship boards of sorts, right? Like we built Chai, we built Mirror and we built Anchor. And I think a lot of people drew inspiration from what we did. And even as we focus on a lot of these different verticals, let's say enhancing and making sure that UST is available everywhere in our cross-chain strategies or that, you know, Terra is the best place to build on. And we have thousands of builders on Terra I think what we're going to try to continue to do is continue this this effort to ship protocols on our own, um, whether it be that we incubate these projects internally or we work very closely with founders who who need the extra push to help launch and scale into success. So, yes, yeah, I'm actually curious, like, yeah, w- within your within your role as special projects, like, what what is the appetite that you're seeing from builders? Like, is it primarily DeFi, are you seeing a lot of game five builders come like come to you? Like what was kind of upside just generally across the board look like? Yeah, I mean there's definitely a lot of um, DeFi protocols that are building on Terra right now. Um, I would say that some of the opportunities in game fi and other areas are are definitely like very strong. I do think that some of those opportunities require like closer partnership or collaboration that we as TFL um, would be actively involved in. So um, there are like larger opportunities with game publishers or with like metaverse platforms that we're working on behind the scenes um, that I think will be released to the public over the next few months that are super exciting, Um, as well as like other protocols who are building like fantasy sports uh, protocols on on Web3 essentially, or um, games like, so for instance, like for the fantasy sports one, there's Fan Fury or there's Playable being built on Terra for games. There's um, Derby Stars, which is uh, a gaming studio that is created by Hashed, which is a long-term supporter and partner of ours. Um, there's like uh, other like partnerships that are in the works that we will disclose in, in, in the coming months. Um, and then, yeah, like DeFi protocols, just given the nature of what Terra is, and our genesis have always been a field of interest for us. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And I'm curious, like, just, you know, a peek behind the curtain, if you will. Um, are there any kind of upcoming projects that you know about that are kind of uh, what I would call, like, narrative changing? Is there anything kind of, like, that's, like, getting you really excited within your role to where you kind of, like, you can't wait for it to kind of become public? Yeah, so um, there's a bunch, right? We we recently launched Prism, which is essentially bringing like the idea of interstate swaps on chain, and allows any any yield bearing assets to be split into a principal token and a yield token. Um, I think that can be really interesting, as as you can imagine, a lot of DeFi is is run on and operated on 
on assets that are productive. So we started with Luna as the collateral, but you know, any LP token is fair game for Prism. Um, in the future, when NFTs are yield bearing, they are, they are game as well. There's a different protocol called Vertex, which is also super interesting, hopefully going to be in beta by end of this month. So maybe it's just in two weeks, but it's striking that there is no dominant non-US dollar pegged stablecoin. And when I alluded to earlier, Terra being a suite of stable coins, while UST is our dominant one, um, we actually by design can, it's trivial for us for there to be a Terra version of, um, let's say the yen, yen peg stable coin, JPT, or the euro peg stable coin, EUT. And those exist, except that they haven't had the light of day because there's just been so much concentration of liquidity and volume going through UST. Uh, Vertex protocol is going to change that um, and change that in the same way by approaching it in a way in which you create utility for these uh, non-US dollar pegged stable coins. So they should be launching in a few weeks um, with FX perps as well as, you know, real world use cases whereby if you live in India, you can take INT, which is the Indian rupee Terran stable coin and deposit that into Anchor natively instead of having to swap into us dollar to deposit and then to redeem um and you can imagine that can apply to any other stable coin and ultimately like if you look at DeFi and everything being dollar denominated at some point it has to change and like there's going to be like a um euro denominated market there's going to be a yen denominated market so i think that's super interesting Hey, SJ, uh, I'm just curious. Um, I saw on your website about the Terra Academy. Yeah. And I know you had mentioned about gaming projects on Terra. So do you see more and more developers um, coming to code in Rust rather than Solidity? And could you kind of touch on, um, I guess, either similarities or differences differences between the two um, languages? Yeah, so I would say that a lot of builders that come to Terra are... Um, people who have experience with other languages um, like C++ and pick up Rust fairly quickly. Um, from builders that I've spoken to, they like Rust in the sense that it is very logical and really at the end of it, it's more secure. So um, not only is Terra and like Cosm Wasm built on Rust, but also I believe Solana as well. And I think that, I don't know, maybe over the next couple of years, Rust may continue to um, pick up market share when it comes to languages for for crypto and for DeFi projects. Um, I do think that there's a lot that we need to do in terms of having the right tools. Um, and like you mentioned, expanding Terra Academy so that when people want to you know, build on Terra and they don't have prior knowledge of Rust, that they can pick it up very quickly. Um, and we're doing that. Obviously, we have um, Natalie Liu, who joined recently to head up our ecosystem prop initiatives. And essentially, I think for the rest of the year, you'll be seeing a lot of hackathons that Terra is part of, but also um, kind of coding boot camps or other partnerships whereby people who want to build on Terra can do so in a more structured and uh, in a manner that's more supported. Sweet. Sweet. And just a follow up question on that. Um, so for some of the people listening, maybe on Spotify or YouTube that are beginners and, you know, may want to get into the space, what are some pointers that you have uh, for beginners um, to either get started coding or start working at Terra, whether you have uh, any positions open at Terra? Yeah, so there is a HR slash um, job kind of site on on our main website, Terra.money. If you're curious about learning more about Terra, I would actually go to YouTube and just look up Terabytes because um, they actually they have a lot of good, helpful resources on getting started on on building on Terra. So I think that can be super interesting. I would you know just reach out to any of us. Like we're reachable on Telegram or on Twitter. So I think we'll we'll definitely be responsive to anybody who's willing to build and um, kind of join the lunatic community. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think we have a very passionate and supportive community as well. So if it's not directly us, I know that there's many um, 
many group chats and like Discord channels where people help each other build as well. Sweet. Awesome. Um, and then just my last question that I have for you. So I'm familiar that you guys are integrated with Chainlink on testnet. Is there any timeline on when you'll be integrated on mainnet? And if you could just speak on the partnership and uh, what services you're using with Chainlink. Yeah, I can. All I can say is soon, very soon. <laughs> um, there are, you know, protocols that are due to launch that are dependent on um, various types of oracles. So we're very eager um, and it's going to be in the next like few weeks. So it's very soon. Um, and I want to say that as kind of the offering of the Terran economy grows, I think dependence on whether it be Chainlink or Band or Pith will continue to increase as well. Um, actually, I had, a, I had a question. You had kind of touched on your, at a really high level, your your strategy or um, expansion strategy for cross chain, and just kind of on the topic of Chainlink, does is Chainlink playing a role within your guys' strategy of expanding cross chain? Yeah, so I want to say that some of the most of our um, cross chain initiatives are really built in partnerships with various types of DApps on other chains. So to the extent that they rely on Chainlink. Um, I would say that Chainlink is an integral part to our strategy. Um, I would say though that right now, a lot of what we're seeing is at the very simplest form, a desire for protocols to adopt UST as ideally their base asset. And um, Pangolin, I think maybe last week, announced that UST is going to be the default um, quote currency for for their protocol. And I think we're going to see continue we're going to continue to see um, announcements like that where, where protocols that are building on DeFi continue to prefer building on a decentralized set of stable coins. Really, really great to see. SJ, I know, I know we kind of have to wrap up here. Uh, any, any like closing thoughts you want to leave the audience with while, while we have you on? No, I want to say, um, you know, this is super brief, but would love to connect with anybody who listened in and is curious. My DMs are open. Um, I know there's, there's like a lot of people in Denver right now for ETH Denver. I think um, Ezon and Doug from, from TFL are there. So hit them up. They're super fun. And um, yeah, let's, let's take UST to a hundred billion. <laughs> let's go. Chase, I see your hands up. Yeah, no, I just want to say uh, thank you, SJ, for your time. I know I know this was, like, super brief. We really just, I feel like, started to barely even scratch the surface of uh, Terra and, like, all the, guys, all the things you guys are doing there. So um, just want to say thanks, and hopefully we can have a, a more in-depth conversation some some point in the future. But uh, I'll be I'll be on the lookout for them at East Denver. Awesome, guys. Yeah, let's do, like, a episode two, <laughs> whatever we have time again. Definitely. And plus one to everything Chase said as well. Thank you for taking the time out of your day. Okay, thank you so much. See ya. Stay base, SJ. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Peace. Stay base. Base to space.